the safety, honor, and welfare of your country comes first. Run! Your own ease and comfort will come last. You are charged with Indian Army Act Section 41, waging war against the king. रात दिन अपने सीने विच वजती आजादी दे राग नू बंद कर ला सब तो पहला मैं हिंदुस्तानी हाँ हेलो एंड वेलकम you are watching Eureka and I am Gohar Raza. Asking questions and seeking answers are as important for some people as breathing is for a common person. And here we have one of the leading technologists and scientists of the country with us today who has throughout his life asked questions and answered them and built the nation. It's a pleasure to have you at Rajya Sabha Television. Professor Udupi Ramachandran Rao, the veteran scientist of ISRO, built the robust space program for India. This legendary scientist accelerated the development of rocket technology in India and did experiments on number of pioneer and explorer space aircrafts. Professor Yuva Rao completed his Masters from Banaras Hindu University and PhD in Cosmic Rays at Physical Research Laboratory, Ahmedabad under the guidance of Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. In 1961, he received a postdoctoral fellowship from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Boston. Here, he carried out further research on cosmic rays and solar winds. After two years of research there, he worked as assistant professor at Southwest Center for Advanced Studies in Texas University. Dr. Rao returned to India in 1966 as a professor at the Physical Research Laboratory, Ahmedabad. Later on, he undertook the responsibility for the establishment of satellite technology in the country during 1972. Under his guidance, beginning with the first Indian satellite Aryabhata in 1975 and 20 satellites including Bhaskar, Apple, Rohini, Insat 1 and Insat 2, series of multi-purpose communication and meteorological satellite IRS-1A, IRS-1B, IRS-1C and 1T. Remote sensing satellites were designed, fabricated, tested and launched. Dr. Yuha Rao became the chairman of ISRO in 1984, where he accelerated the development of rocket technology in India, resulting in the successful launch of ASLV rocket in 1992. He was also responsible for the development of operational PSLV launch vehicle. Professor Rao initiated the development of geostationary launch vehicle GSLV and the development of cryogenic technology in 1991. He tirelessly worked toward the utilization of the vast benefits from space technology for the development of India. Professor Yuha Rao was bestowed with various national and international recognitions. Noted among them is Padma Bhushan in 1976 and Padma Vibhushan in 2017. He became the first Indian space scientist to be inducted into the highly prestigious Satellite Hall of Fame at Washington DC, USA in the year 2013. Professor Rao took his last breath on 24th July 2017. But he will live in everyone's heart and always inspire the young minds. Let me begin by asking you a question that do you remember the hurdles, the problems in getting education when you were a child? Yes, I do remember and uh, I would like to forget, but then uh, as a part of life, uh, because every time I did not know whether first I was going to a college 
and uh, then it so happened I ended up in a college at Bellari. Do you remember some teachers in the school? Uh, yes, I remember the first two, two, three years when I didn't join a school, there was a, a, a teacher who had uh, students from of different ages, he was teaching, and then he took me and admitted me to the school. And uh, he was a wonderful person. In fact, even just before going to United States, after my days, and I just went and met him. He was very old. And he was a marvelous teacher. With students in first standard to fourth standard or fifth standard, everybody shouting around. Yet he somehow felt so happy to teach the students. And I'm sure it must have been wonderful because you remember it even after almost eight that's years. Right. That's right. Uh, your father always encouraged you to. Um, well, I don't seek think he the best really understood education. what I was doing. Just let me do what I liked, <laughs> and, and to that extent, yes, he never came in the way. Uh, and my mother. How about was your mother? Hmm? How about your mother? She also mother, encouraged she was, you. She was very keen that I should study. But again, uh, she, she was an extremely good musician and so on. Uh, she came from a family where her father was a well-known musician in the Udupi temple, actually. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but uh, she didn't know anything. But she was very, very conscious of the fact that uh, she must encourage me. They wouldn't have imagined that you will become Hmm. No. Chairman of ISRO. <laughs> That's right. At some point of That's time right. in life. That's right. Uh, uh, when did you start um, well, doing after my, science? Science as science. Science as science. I Not as a subject. E e even, even in, uh, well, I would say that in intermediate, I, with those days it was called, it used to be called an intermediate, two years after SSLC, I started uh, learning. Really, I started looking at science more actively, with much greater interest, particularly physics. Then in BSc, of course, I took physics because of that, and that was in Anantapur, and then MSc in Benares. When we started our space research program, there were many hurdles, technical, scientific, international relationship, this, that. What gave you and uh, your predecessors Confidence that we will be able to do it. Because your one-liner has been that if anybody can do it in the world, we can do it better. How did you get that confidence? Well, that confidence, I think, came in uh, United States, in a way. Because the fact is that uh, when NASA, for example, asked us to do it and uh, build the whole thing, we built it the whole instrument. The whole idea of going from MIT to Dallas was that we'll do it in our own hand. And that's what we did. And uh, then went and had balloon flights, which were really successful. You are credited by your uh, juniors, especially students, and those who worked with you, that you could excite each and every buddy who was inducted at any point of time in SRO. Did you take special care or it was part of your it personality? It was part of my, I think, uh, uh, attitude. Because I knew one thing, that you, if you don't, if everybody is not excited, you will never be able to do the work. Yes, sometimes you do find it difficult. Sometimes you may even uh, have a difficult uh, uh, failure. Uh, but you have to get out of this. And this was in a way... Uh, Dr. Sarabhai's attitude. I think I must say derived some of these things probably by looking at him and working with him and uh, so on. Were you always conscious of the fact that Dr. Sarabhai and others and you yourself are taking big challenges? These are really big challenges. These are nothing. Yes. Uh, yes. Something not with, which can be done that, in a GP. That is true. And the failures are bound to happen because in fact when Dr. Sarabhai uh, I was about to say that when Professor Bowser had this three four, four balloon flights successfully, one after the other failed. And they were, of course, rockets brought from elsewhere. They were sounding rockets. And when they came back, Dr. Sarabai first talked to Bowser, when did the Armada, Spanish Armada come? And uh, Bowser was, Professor Bowser was uh, worried. Then he said, come on, after 10 minutes, come on, let's see, when will we start the next program?
See, the whole attitude was, look, it is a part of the thing. You can't, you can't simply say I will have 100% success. Right. And, and every minutes, failure is a learning point. Every failure is a learning point. And uh, therefore, uh, obviously, when you, and that's the whole idea of uh, the, the, the early So from very small satellites to very large satellites, and you become satellite man of India. And then from very small ASLV to PSLV to now GSLV, you become rocket man. How did you switch over from one to another just because you became uh, uh, well, ISRO chairman? I, I remember that when even when I was in US, for many ro the rockets I was involved in. See, the whole idea of going to Dallas was we want to learn everything. Therefore, we had our own, in addition to whatever was uh, done, and uh, uh, then the, uh, and in, in fact, I knew that we would have failure in ASLV. ASLV, we had two failures, uh, because the SLV was a very simple rocket. It was no control, no guidance, nothing. It was just a thing which went up, and right. even that we had one, one rocket. Correct. And Dr. Kalam was the the project director for that. And uh, but the ASLV was the most difficult rocket. Actually, it's far more difficult than any other rocket. Mm -hmm. uh, simply because uh, with the two strap-on added, uh, it could launch about 140 kilograms. And so it is. And in that small rocket, we had to put all control, guidance, and everything because we wanted to keep the cost down. And I all of us knew that couple of failures may occur and therefore we want to keep the cost down. And we had the first one unfortunately failed without even telling the totality of the truth. The, and the, but it was, I believe it is the same problem. It's the control and guidance because the entire closed loop guidance control system was put up. And it was very difficult because it's a small rocket to put that. Right. And uh, having done that, PSLV was a much easier system because it's a much bigger rocket. Mm. And uh, the basic problem of any rocket PSLV, is controlling it. Even when, when you started building up, ISRO started building a PSLV, the cost factor cost was at the back of the cost. mind always because we have developed probably an attitude to do things at much uh, cost effective manner. That is true. And much, much, because we are doing everything here. And anyway, there was no way of getting anything from outside. And we had to build our own. Will you say, a lot of people say that India has done good only in those areas of science where others did not come to help? Well, when others did not come to help, of course, you are forced to do it. Maybe that may be the reason. But, uh, but No, but you had an option like other countries. Don't do it. Well, that's true. But a large hand, number of countries which had money did not do it, did, did not, not develop it. science right, at that's all. That's right. But we were sure that this is the only way to build technology. That was something inborn in us. And this was the dream of the nation. Yes. It was not a nation devoid of science and technology. No, no. We thought and dreamt of a nation yes, right. which will have strong technological That's and right. scientific And place. everywhere we demonstrated to the country the usefulness of it. For example, even before for the, uh, uh, not only the coconut business, but we built up a ground station at uh, Hyderabad for receiving data from the Landsat. And those were used for actual purposes. And we had lots of meetings. It started with Dr. Sarabhai and continued with Professor Dawan's time. And when we had meetings with forestry, agriculture, everywhere, showing, look, what can be done? So in other words, we built up a large number of people in this process who could use the satellite data and, and use it for actual development of the, the, our natural and resources. And cracking daily problems, the, the daily day to problem. do problems, and also for the seasonal problems. The seasonal problem. And floods, for example. Floods. And uh, cyclones, tornadoes. cyclones, tornadoes. All these things we started demonstrating. And meteorology, again, we took the people, even when, even though first four, uh, the, uh, Insights were bought from outside, but the design was basic design was ours, and unfortunately, two failed. Of course, we didn't lose any money because they were all insured, and uh, this is this was the problem with the Ford Aerospace. Even they, 
uh, it, it, it was a totally new type of technology where we put everything together with a long sail and boom going out and so on. The first one, the sail and boom did not go up. In the, so the second one had went, but then the entire system finally would work. But the third one, again, we had a problem. There was a shortage. Fourth one went to another. But then our first one, whereas in the remote sensing, we said we'll do it start away, set straight away. So after Aryabhat, we had Bhaskara, just to show again, we can make our own cameras. You can't get these cameras. Right. We made our own camera, one camera, one microwave thing system. And then our cameras are built. Cam and when we... The and better ones. Be better ones. Much in better than... In fact, uh, the beauty of it was, uh, in the original thing, it was exactly the same as Landsat. The first IRS one was same as Landsat. Because we, the, all of our agriculture people, everybody was happy enough with that. That was the resolution was only about 30 meters. 36 meters, actually. Then we went to a better thing. And then, by that time, French had put up 10 meters. And CCD technology was introduced in India? In, it's, uh, CCD technology was introduced in, with, the, with the remote sensing satellites. Right. Not in Aribat, uh, in, not in Bhaskara, but in the inside. But that uh, was the sorry, first in, in time. IRS. That was the first time in the world that CCD technology was. No, at that time, the Landsat also has started, and space, the site, the, 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 these people, the French had started the spot. Right. And but I got so angry, and every collected everybody, and I said, "Why are we being told that we are the sixth country, sixth country?" I said, "I'm tired of hearing. Why can't we be the first country?" Then they said, "How?" I said, "If French have put ten meters, we should put five meters." I said, "Sir, can we do it?" I said, "We can do it." So <laughs> we and we did do it, and from ten meters, the French were there. We are having six meters, so we started selling our thing. Today, 18 countries receive our data, including the first one was United States to receive. And that is in to Norman. take data from us. From ours. Norman, Oklahoma, I went and inaugurated it. When Siddharth Shankaray was, he also was there, he was the ambassador. In fact... So, there are many firsts as far right. as ISRO is concerned. Yes. To and its today credit. we get uh, quite a number of, uh, enormous amount of money from, from these people. Very. Right. And... And in, it's in been fact, earning, yeah, earning in, in fact, Rajiv, Rajiv Gandhi said, I worked with five prime ministers. And Mrs. Gandhi, Rajiv Gandhi, and VP Singh, and then last was Narasim Rao, and Vizral, and uh, Chandra Shekhar, and so on. And Rajiv Gandhi said, why are you so keen to put in the United States? And that was the first, first station. I said, if I put in some smaller place, everybody will say, okay. Now, if I put in United States, now you'll say, okay, he must be somewhat good. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. See, this shift and, from... And, and they advertise very well. The country which gave Taj Mahal to the world has given the wonderful remote sensing satellite, they said. That's how they advertise in, 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 in uh, USA. We are going to be a GSLV uh, sad, yeah. uh, launch vehicle country. Yeah very soon yeah. and demonstrate to the world that we can... It must be much more than that. Even the JSLV which is there is already, it has been tested, uh, but we need a far bigger one. And then it depends upon country has to take a very, very important decision. Are we going to go into manned flights? If we are going to go into manned flights... I was coming to that. If the country takes a decision, is ISRO ready to take I, the plunge? I have no doubt about it. I have absolutely no doubt about it, because the the capability was, in fact, in a way, our ASLV was our turning point. The first PSLV itself, even though it was considered a failure, it was not really a failure. See, it was a small hitch in the computer, which instead of telling, asking the the fourth stage to go up, instead asked the fourth stage to go down. There was an overflow, and that was a <laughs> that was a Nothing could be done. So it was a definite and, and instruction exactly, given by the... But exactly as the instructions given, it went. See, therefore, we knew precisely well. Because so for a scientist, it was a success. So for a scientist, it was a full success. Because for a common person, maybe it was a failure. That's right. But for scientists, it was it, a success just because it followed the correct absolutely. instruction. It said, look, computer tells me yeah, you have nothing to do with it. <laughs> so every, every stage, it went down. And, and 
the most difficult portion is the lower atmosphere and everything went beautifully uh, we learned all our lesson of technology in, in aslv and that was uh, so because they, we just broke if the nation gives mandate to isro that now we want to launch human being into space like other countries we are ready yes well we we it will take time it will take time it will take time uh, we but are I, i i personally think that uh, uh, i won't uh, we will have to do some work uh, i don't like the purely cryogenic i it is you see uh, if it is a not a human i mean not for transporting human being then is different I and mean, there may be once in a while failure fortunately we we have had no except for the first one and the, uh, there are no failures in pslv it has been one of the finest uh, but you can have problem because cryogenic is always particularly liquid hydrogen is a bit difficult thing so human beings when we go we go to semi cryogenic and people we have will still argue for semi cryogenic i i will argue for semi cryogenic we have started the work on that right and the last the just the liquid the, the we can have the liquid nitrogen there is no problem much easier to handle liquid hydrogen is always a great problem and uh, liquid nitrogen and probably the kerosene or whatever it is the type of the thing we can use. there there are work going on see some amount of work is always going on in this room in in the name of development right in fact when we did aryabhat uh, we and we had already st- started the control systems of the baskara when we did the baskara we did for the apple three because that was a three axis stability system right and so and in uh, in fact we had the control engineer was extremely good engineer he said sir i have no work i said do for the baskara he said baskara is not uh, approved sir i said we'll get it approved get moving <laughs> see that is what that, uh, a leader is that's right uh, and expected to do because you have to you have that for development is something which has to be done and, and for even, that even you have to be abreast with latest absolutely, in the field absolutely i'll have to take a break at the moment but the discussion will continue welcome back to eureka I wanted to ask you our experience with both United States and uh, uh, USSR at that time was friendly as well as competitive it and it was and friendly it was not competitive i wouldn't say competitive competition came later it was friendly and we got all this rocket but we ran into problems we at that time we didn't get we we, we had uh, free rockets these were given right and the french in fact even uh, gave the something for the centaur which are again rockets uh, then of course it was clear we must mass satellite program we must start our own rocket program and not only sounding rockets but bigger rockets for launching satellites so the space science technology center was formed within a couple of years after tumba and uh, started a larger program of dr sarabai and then he wanted me to start the satellite program so i he said that you wrote, write a whole uh, thesis on how satellites have to be used how they can be used and so on. so i wrote a sort of a thesis in took two months and uh, then gave it to him and he said i like the thesis wonderful it is but one thing i don't like i said what you what 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 is it which you don't like he said you haven't said who is going to do it i said vikram that is your problem to find somebody who is going to do it you wanted me to write the thesis i wrote the thesis for you and he said no you have to accept it for one year i didn't want to i said i was going as a visiting professor because my pioneer series were going on and but you did it at the end of one year he he was my professor therefore there was nothing i could do to stop it he was such a persuasive man and finally i said okay and we started with a small group we had some 20 people in trivandrum and i had my own 40 people here in in uh, in amdabad about that completely people. untrained completely they didn't know anything nothing, about satellites nothing about satellites and uh, then 
uh, I said, all right, okay. Uh, we said we'll build a 100 kilogram sa uh, satellite. In Bangalore? In, uh, in uh, we are not sure of that. Bangalore was not in the picture at that time. And uh, for that, when we, did had, it we come had to have picture? a launch. And when were, did you have uh, uh, Bangalore? That was after Sarabhai's death. After Sarabhai's yeah. death. And we, we thought we'll use scout rocket. Because scout rocket had become famous in the first X-ray astronomy rocket, right. which was launched from Kenya. <laughs> and it's an American rocket. It's Correct. not a big rocket, but it's a small rocket. It could launch about 100 to 120 kilograms. And uh, then Dar, who was our ambassador in, in Russia, he wrote a letter to Mrs. Gandhi saying, look, the Russians are willing to assist you and so on. You are not going to Russia, you are only going to US. And he said, Professor Rao seems to have been sent to US for finding out about this. So Dr. Sarabhai called and we had a meeting at uh, Delhi with the Russian ambassador right. within, within eight days after that. Mrs. Gandhi sent that letter. very short notice. Very, you very short notice. To US Only well. Mr. Velody was there, myself and Dr. Sarabhai and Ambassador Pigov. And I was asked to present for 15 minutes. I presented, look, this is what we want to do. We first build a first satellite, experimental satellite, so that we learn satellite technology. And then we'll talk of, obviously, where to go in for the uh, communications. And, and Russians so were not very comfortable that you will be able to build Apple. They were, uh, Apple very made, it was X. Arribata. And, uh, but Ambassador Peacock said, after hearing that, what's the weight of your satellite? I said, we are doing it for 100 kilogram satellite. Therefore, maybe one experiment we'll put. He said, no, yours must be heavier than the first Chinese satellite. And uh, Chinese, I said Chinese satellite was about 180 kilograms. He said, U.S. must be heavier. I said, that is, that is easier than doing a lighter satellite. Correct. And within another two months, I, I asked again Dr. Sarabhai, I said, you go And you and were given 36 uh, uh, months to complete it. So that is in uh, the, the big decision started at, uh, with the academy. Uh, I do not want to end the conversation, but in the end, Every beautiful thing should come to an end. And in the end, I would like to ask you if you have a message for the younger generation. Do you like to give one? So what I could say is that, uh, I, I know that, for example, when I was in MSc, even in Benares, if I had said I want to do space, I'm not even sure whether my own professors would have uh, uh, welcomed it very easily. Because at that time, space was not heard of. But dare to dream, I think. It's the one main thing is you must dream. And uh, you, then you have to just dedicate yourself for that. Dream, a dream which is difficult, yes, and then work for it. Then the, what, that is the mantra the, absolutely. to become That's a real good citizen That's of planet it. Earth. That's Write to us at eurekarstv at gmail.com. We'll come back next week once again with an outstanding scientist. It's been fascinating talking to you. It's been just wonderful.